or a digital medium on the internet, how you can uh, 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 organize the space in a choreographed way and how um, uh, even dramatic situations can be choreographed in movement terms. So then you have to have an understanding about the frame, how the frame is um, 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 uh, 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 dealt with like a visual artist would be. In the visual art, it is a static image where you have to think about in dance is, is like um, a kind of, um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, it's a time-based art, so it's movement in time. So that is a huge potential about this. And our traditions are a great examples if you understand the concepts of the body and the principles of movement and how that could be translated. Not the outer, outer movement uh, gestures. Those, those, the gestures what um, um, Prakash was mentioning is the semiotic information or the bodily, uh, em the embodied information of a culture. That is, comes as a physical gesture. And that can be um, um, uh, explored and experimented with the contemporary time, then new expressions will come. In at, at Articulary, our training strategy is to combine the wisdom of Indian physical traditions and performance traditions with the possibilities of information from other cultures like contemporary dance, capoeira, um, uh, street dance, or ballet, or other disciplines as well. So I just say this much because of the time, and then if there is questions, I can explain further. Thank you. Thank you, Jai. It's curious that in the Natya Shastra, for instance, spaces are not measured by external benchmarks. They're measured by, you know, the, the, by the hands and feet and height, by, by the human parameter, you know, physical parameter. Um, I want to recall uh, uh, an extraordinary um, moment for me of realization that happened at a Rangashankara seminar a few years ago when uh, Dr. Hannah de Bruin had come to Rangashankara and we were talking about this uh, normal, uh, these normal, you know, bipolar things that we're talking about, Desi, Margir, folk, classical, you know, Western, Indian kind of thing. And we also use this word, what is mainstream and what is folk. And she said, I find this entire terminology extraordinary, she said. She said, because, let me tell you, what you people do in the city is really small. Folk is the mainstream in India. There are millions of Indians watching performances every day which are folk. And, uh, you know, what you do is really small. It's just that you get reported more, that's all. She said, it's true. And it, to me, it seems also Indian cinema is an extension of Indian folk metaphors rather than anything else. I'll give you an example why. You know, when, um, when Devanand says, Edil na hota bechara, he's singing, the man singing alone. Or, uh, you know, or uh, uh, Shivaji uh, walking down, Shivaji Ganeshan walking down and singing on the, st on the road. What does it mean actually? It is not something that can be spoken in dialogue. It is something that is felt in the heart. And it's an extraordinary contribution of Indian cinema, this idiom of actually voicing feeling, of voicing, speaking from the soul, you can do with song. If the person speaks like that in character, he may be a village idiot sometimes, and how can he say it then? It becomes, you know, so these contributions actually come from, I would think, an Indian folk wisdom. And um, see, there's an element that we're missing here, you know, which I was hope, hoping that, you know, you know B. Jayashri could fill, which was music. Uh, but uh, all of us have come from, you know, we are lucky, we have come from, uh, the three of us here at least have come, four of us come from Kannada theater, which included a lot of music because of B.B. Karant and because of Ashwath. And we all sing songs from plays that all these people have acted in. So I'm also going to ask Naga Parna to recall some of this and say, is there some ways of enriching our writing, our metaphors, our scripts, our imaginations with, uh, with folk wisdoms and folk inspiration? And is there any possibility of including that in training programs from your own experience? Uh, <clears throat> D. 
dear friends. Uh, actually, we are talking about performing arts in a way. So the performing arts, when once it is performed, somebody has to see it. Then only it becomes a performance. I can't all, all alone uh, sing in a bathroom and say that it is I have performed. So somewhere this performance, it was the indigenous uh, factor of a, um, any human being. Uh, it is already embedded in his uh, body, in his mind. Uh, there is a, a laya, there is a shruti, which is already the embedded in his body and in his mind. So invariably, he performs whenever he speaks to someone, whenever he communicates to someone. So our uh, forefathers, they have invented a different kind of approach for that. So there were a lot of arikatas, that, this, and everything. You know the genres which, uh, which were being uh, experimented, used, and uh, performed in different forms. We all know about it. But how much of that has been involved and included in theater and cinema? This is where I, com I came into this. Actually, uh, we don't need anything. We don't need training at all because the, everybody thinks that I can do it. As I always say that everybody can dream but everybody cannot perform. So somewhere there has to be a training. So there was a Gurukula Parampare which was uh, having which is which, uh, own uh, way of uh, teaching them. Uh, I, my, I myself must tell about uh, that Kamsale uh, instrument which has been used in the um, Mysore area, Mysore district area, which is not, cannot perform, each and everybody cannot perform, unless he, is, he gets a training out of that. So otherwise he will hit himself. So those kind of um, folk artist, folk uh, genre, which picked up later on, and now it has been uh, used in a different way, in, in, a, in a commercial way, what we call it as. So we use that, and uh, use it in such a misused way that everybody thinks that as I have done justice to that folk art, I have done it. But literally they have uh, spoiled that uh, folk uh, tradition. So somewhere here, the performing art has to be trained. That is what we need today. Any performing art has to be trained. And the training is a must. We all, all always accept that. We all of us accept that. But at the same time, the theater which started interpreting this and putting this art forum in a different way, which started in uh, uh, way back to 1969 and 70s when Karanth came to theater and started using his uh, Yakshigana skills in some of the places like Hayavadana and others. So we came to explore how the, those forms can be used in theater. But whereas in films, they used to. Earlier also there was a lot of uh, folk uh, songs, folk elements have been used uh, with the 70, uh, 75 to 80 years of uh, uh, history behind. Uh, there is a lot of uh, directors earlier they used it. But they used it as a form. There was no interpretation. They used it as a form. And they presented it as a form. But the interpretation started only after 1970s where we come to know that the folk art can be a part and parcel of any expression whether it is theatre and cinema, it can render and it can really communicate in a better way and much artistic way. So those experiments you have already seen, you know what, what, which are those experiments also. Uh, whether it is uh, Yakshigana, whether it is Kamsale, whether it is uh, Mante Swami or wherever it is. Because there are about uh, 90 major folk dances are available in India. Can you believe this? 90, 90. And especially in Karnataka, there are about 35. So we are so rich in it. So with all that, learning a culture, learning uh, ethnics, and uh, learning the fundamental performances, and theater, and especially cinema, needs a big chunk of uh, folk behind it. Uh, let us discuss it later. Thank you. Thank you, Naga Bharanaji. Uh, Aru, you have acted in, uh, in uh, Gujarati theatre, Hindi theatre, Marathi theatre, Kannada theatre, English language theatre, Tamil cinema, Kannada cinema, Hindi cinema. 
and you know it has been suggested in the past that actually we should stop teaching this language and that language in in schools in in a country like india we should teach language that means all languages you know language is a structure and you teach language and yeah and you teach vyakarana it means like grammar many grammars it may be you know you teach like that because in this country you cannot borrow uh, cartesian models from the west end you know do we are we, are, we can only be an inclusive country somebody said uh, what is the difference between folk folk performance and other performance in folk performance there is no difference between performer and spectator it's a ritual in which they participate if you go to a wedding everybody is doing the wedding even the people who are sitting at the wedding are in the wedding not just the people who are getting wedded so that is a folk performance a puja everybody participates in puja even if they do various roles even if you have just bhakti and sit there you are still participating and say so that is folk and uh, again i come back to saying that's something there that is there in indian cinema and we should not lose that actually but we know that cinema is fed from the performing arts we do not i'm afraid have those great artists anymore you know the singer md pallavi once told me that when she went to dr rajkumar's house to invite him uh, for her wedding uh, you know yes murthy her grandfather said you know she is a very good singer and uh, so she sang a song and uh, then you know they left and dr rajkumar walked up to the gate and he said adu pantavarali raga alva meaning he could he could actually he knew the the melakartha raga from which that song was composed he could dance like we have seen we have dr kamal hasan who can do many things i don't know whether we have that anymore and that comes from an earlier training in the performing arts i'm saying so aru should tell us how do we get this back two questions you know one is that how did you train and two i think you train from performance rather than anything else and two how can we actually get performances out everywhere you know we should see maybe 300 shows of atakalir's performance in bangalore why can't we have a network of theaters and what can the government what could fiki do to get this going for us namaskar ah i'm going to give it a shot <laughs> let me try we have little time but i guess my friends who all represent the performance arts have spoken succinctly and uh, we are talking about space spaces which i guess in a city context or even in small town context we performance artists seem to have lost the experience of having built ranga shankara has taught me a lot it has just taught me that we need nerve centers we need and theater has to redefine itself theater the amateur theater especially i guess even the professional theater is almost on its way out professional theater as we understand it being the company theater tradition is almost on its way out because i think television has replaced it in many ways and uh, we the amateur urban contemporary theater practitioners who as you said are the tip of the iceberg we think we are the cat's whiskers but uh, we are really just a city phenomenon and even that we are not been able to communicate with our audiences so we are going to have to redefine ourselves instead of crying horse that oh we don't have an audience we i think theater is today the most affordable art creation possible because cinema is too expensive television has sold its heart out to the marketplace if i may say so and uh, you cannot watch anything on television without an advertisement 
So it is such an expensive medium that it will pander to the common denominator and give you things that you really don't need in terms of quality, in terms of content. This is my personal take on it. Many of us have stopped watching television. There is nothing in it for us. So whom are we creating this million, million, trillion dollar monster for? But theatre, I think, I think the smaller work, the finer work, is the responsibility of those who are capable of thinking in that direction. And theatre can become that laboratory that reflects upon the bridge, upon those creations that will define, will define storytelling. Finally, it's all about telling a story, about interpreting a human condition, about talking to people of an experience. So whether it is in music, whether it is in dance, in literature, in theater or cinema, we are all talking of finally the one and only thing, which is a human being's interpretation, the human predicament and interpretation of that. So we need more spaces like Ranga Shankara, which are affordable, uh, world-class in terms of the physical structures and um, available, available to many, many youngsters. In fact, in the nine-year journey, we have realized youngsters have galvanized themselves, formed groups, but now they, I feel they're a misguided lot now. They don't know what to do with this affordable space because a whole generation forsake forsaked the arts. They went away to television. And maybe my generation is to blame. We left the theater, we left drama, and went away to perform drama in television and in cinema. But anywhere in the world, the best actors really come from this training ground of theater, which has time to train you. A country like India, a billion and more human beings, and one drama school. One drama school that gives me 20 students every year who make a beeline for Bollywood. Whom is this money being spent for? So I guess instead of bickering, we need to look at what are the positive things that can be done. Of course, we have Ninasam. Of course, we have the Kerala school. But another two schools that are training 20 students each every year. So as was underlined by everybody, training is necessary. I do not come from the National School of Drama, unfortunately, but life has been my training school. And if you are curious, you can learn. If you have gurus whom you're ready to follow, you can learn. So I, my training school was the Marathi Professional Theater, the Gujarati Professional Theater. I came to Karnataka, I did not know Kannada. I learned Kannada and I wanted to do theater, so I'm doing theater in Kannada. That has truly been my training ground. I have benefited greatly, as you said, you need only to teach children languages. I've benefited greatly from this gift that I seem to have of learning languages. I can manage anywhere on earth. Give me a play in Chinese and I'll learn Chinese. <laughs> So this love for languages, respect for languages, the metaphor is locked in the language. I speak English right now to you because there are many who don't know English, but my subtexts are in so many languages. And there's this rich backyard that kind of keeps feeding images to me in different words. And my dreams are in many languages. So. I think I'll round off by saying that the government could definitely, in Karnataka, I think the government has done a great job by giving this civic amenity site to Ranga Shankara. It's on a 30-year lease. And many people said I was an idiot for building uh, a theater on, with public money. The money is not mine. I only went around asking for it. And uh, the government gave us this site on a 30-year lease. So many people said, how could you build it? At the end of 30 years, you'll be thrown out. I said, this is not a property that is going to be inherited by my child. 
This is built for the city and the community. And if at the end of 30 years, Ranga Shankara is not doing what it was born for, let the government take it away. But if it is doing what it was born for, the people of Bangalore, who are the first recipients of this project, will not allow it to go away. So we need, we need owners, we really need people who will own this project and many more such projects. It's not about a building, it's really about the activity. And I hope the government can give Jai Chandran a sight. Jai has changed the way we look at the human body and the spaces it occupies. Dance, he's a very fine trained Bharatanatyam dancer who has gone into a different search of making us aware of other forms, other ways of using our human body. And it's extremely important, the work that he is doing. So if the government can, just give more civic community sites, not for Kalyan Mantapas and maybe for, you know, because Kalyan Mantapas are called cultural centers. And we, Ranga Shankara, I am called a Mantap keeper. Okay, yeah, <laughs> so we are categorized in the Kalyan Mantap category. If we can have more such, and if we actually we can have four spaces like Ranga Shankara in four different parts of the city that showcase not only theater, we needed to do theater because there was no space nine.